you can hear me, but what I'm going to do in this video is talk about the setup that we're using in the Pines Lab and how we've been updating it slowly over time. And so the really cool thing here is we've been finally able to integrate our valve controller to our analysis NMR machine. So we're able to cause spectra acquisitions to occur uh, from the same controller that we're operating our valves from. And um, a big point of what my postdoc wants is trying to keep everything modular. So we have everything on top of this part and the valves are controlling the fluid streams some kind of sample preparation by uh, performing the valves, opening and closing the valves in some kind of sequence, and then the sample will get piped into the NMR too. Uh, so we've got these setups here, we're actually running experiments, and uh, we'll cause the spectra acquisitions to occur at a set time. And so on the this Arduino here, you'll note how there's only a power cable that's connecting this, and so uh, the reason for that is we're able to now send and receive data over this very nice Bluetooth module. So we have a wireless connection between the laptop here, which can be anywhere within range, uh, and it can operate and control everything on this part, which is very nice. And so um, what you'll note is right now it's in a uh, mode when the Bluetooth device is ready to be connected to it. So if we go onto the computer, we can see the code that's already been uploaded a priori to the Arduino here. And I've defined the pins as the valves that they operate. So we've got valve one, two, three, and four, as well as the NMR trigger. And uh, the way we can see if the valves are on uh, are based on these relays because the valves operate on a 24 volt circuit and the Arduino operates on a five volt circuit. So we've got these relays as a uh, bridge between the two circuits. And uh, when we check if the NMR trigger has been sent, this green LED here will light up uh, as a falling edge trigger is sent to the NMR machine over the serial cable there to cause a spectra acquisition to occur. And so um, the code uh, is pretty straightforward. It just detects whatever value is read over the serial port, uh, which in this case will be what is ever received by this Bluetooth module, and based on what's received over that wireless uh, interface, it will respond appropriately. And so the way to run this code is to pair the Bluetooth device to the laptop, because the laptop has built-in Bluetooth, and uh, in this case, the outgoing Bluetooth port is COM5, and we set the mode rate to 9600, which is the default, and the processing code creates a very nice GUI using the control P5 library. And so if we run this code, what we would get uh, after it loads is a graphical user interface. And what we'll also notice how this light is now solid, so it's now paired to the laptop wirelessly. Um, and we get these uh, toggle switches to operate the valves that we have in our process. So we go to valve one, for instance, we click open. We can now see that the light here is open. And if I click close, it closes it wirelessly. We can do the same for valve two, three, and four. And uh, what we can also do is perform a valve check using this button. And the nice thing about the processing code is it will let us define uh, and script a lot of our sample preparation tasks. So this would be an example of it. So we click valve check it will iterate through the valves in a precise manner uh, that's controlled by the Arduino here and the processing code. So all of our presets and scripts are defined within processing and the processing code will then control the Arduino itself which operates the valves. And then if we click on the NMR trigger button, we'll see here that the light has lit up indicating that a falling edge trigger has been sent to the NMR machine so we can script not only our sample preparations now by operating the valves, but also the spectra acquisitions, which is very important because time is of the essence. Uh, as uh, spin does decay in molecules that we're analyzing, so that's very important. We also have a close all button. So if we have uh, an emergency happen and we have valves one and three open, for instance, and we need to close all of them, we can just click close all and it will close all the valves uh, for safety. 
And then we can also have uh, custom functions here, which we can define whatever we want by rewriting the callbacks. So if I click custom now, uh, we'll just note how uh, it's going through some sequence in which it's holding each valve open for a different amount of time and then closing it. Uh, and so it's pretty cool stuff. Uh, just to go into the code a little bit more, what you can see is um, every call, every button is first declared, and then we have a callback for that button. And so when the callback is received, it sends something over to serial port, which in this case is this Bluetooth module, um, to the Arduino itself to actually do something. And so um, that's how we're actually controlling this stuff. So, um, and we also have we're using booleans to. Uh, check if the valves are open or closed before we do something. Um, and if we look at the uh, valve check code, for instance, it's just a simple for loop that iterates uh, opening and closing the four valves consecutively as a way to kind of check test in case we have uh, electrical problems later on in our experiments. And then in the custom area, uh, we're able to define whatever we want with uh, particular scripts. And finally, the NMR trigger is a matter of sending an appropriate signal over to serial port, which will cause the Digi2 pin, which is a pin on the NMR machine itself, to be grounded on a uh, logical voltage difference. And this causes the falling edge trigger to be sent. And then also, there is a log, so we can see what's happened um, every time something is sent from processing to Arduino, which is a nice way of tracking uh, like an experiment's history or something like that. So I hope you guys find this stuff cool and thanks for watching. <laughs>